From the studios of NBC 12 and ABC 25, this is Good Morning Jacksonville at 6. Here are your big three stories on your Thursday morning at 6 o'clock. Number one, First Coast, going to have a lot of national media, going to have your motorcades and Secret Service. Both President Obama and Donald Trump holding a couple of rallies here in town. Trump's going to be at the Jack's Equestrian Center at noon. The president going to speak at UNF at 1.30. And number two on this Thursday morning, it's official. The first Ikea in North Florida is in the works. Crews will break ground on the Jacksonville store at 10 this morning. It's located off 295 in Gate Parkway near the town center. The store is expected to open in the fall of 2017. Hey, Chicago, number three, hey, the Cubs, if you believe in a curse, well, it's gone now. They broke the curse. The team has won its first World Series in more than a century. You have thousands and thousands and thousands of fans rushing to the streets of Wrigleyville overnight. And I imagine some are still partying because huh. it only ended just a few years ago. If you think those fans are crazy, we have a interesting fan oh. rolling behind us right now. I heard her shuffling on in. Yes. Lindsay Boat, she's a big one with a big W there. Big fan of the Cubs. Big. Big, big, big old W. Oh so, man, it feels good. All the Cleveland people out there, because you know there's some out there know, like that, you know Lindsey Boach. That's fine. You yeah, had a great nah. season as well, but we won. You won. Ooh, we won. By the W, you got it. Yeah, the Cavaliers win. We get give us the cup. That's a good point. <laughs> you got it. You won. Good morning, folks, oh, and welcome here to Good yeah. Morning Jacksonville on this Thursday morning. I'm Keith Nelson. I'm excited for you. I really am. <laughs> Stayed up all night. Uh, maybe got about an hour of sleep last night, and you're probably feeling the same sort of burn in those eyeballs. Mike Prangley and Katie Jeffries. Or behind us, I think they were going to show up <laughs> oh, there. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Hi. There we go. Yeah, that's there we go. great. They're perfect. Yes. They're playing. There go. Oh, ah, oh, even better. Now we're friends. We, <laughs> we do TV professionally. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Guys, how's it going? Did y'all stay up late? Did y'all do this whole thing? I oh, tried, yes. and then I fell asleep in like the second inning. Yeah, Cubs were up three is the last thing I remembered, and I was happy that I woke <laughs> up and they won. So a great day. And Katie, notice yes. not as much fog, so much yeah. friendlier in the fogometer this morning as you're heading out the door. The kids can wear the shorts again. Another warm day. As we take a look at those visibilities on the high side, a little patchy fog thickest up toward Waycross and Alma. We are also tracking a few showers this morning offshore. These eventually will make a move onshore, but driving to work and school, I-95, A-18, not looking for any rain this morning early first thing, but that changes by late morning, early afternoon. I know we have a lot of events going on around town. Notice these showers start to fill in. That includes areas like UNF and then toward the west side and the equestrian center this afternoon. Say so take the umbrella for late morning, midday into mid afternoon and picking up the kids and then these showers will quickly dissipate for the drive home. So transition Thursdays here. We'll have high temperatures right around 80 degrees, mid 70s at the beach. Now let's get you out the door safely with Katie Jeffries in the Vice Star Credit Union Traffic Center. Thank you so much, Mike. All right, so we're taking a look here. This is a look at 295 near New Kings Road, and you can see that crash. We understand it involves some injuries on the southbound right shoulder. So please remember that move over law and definitely give them space when you do pass on by. So this is on the southbound side of 295 just before you would get to New Kings Road. Uh, you please use caution when you pass them on by because it's still a pretty active scene. Elsewhere on our roadways here in Orange Park, we have an accident on Blanding at Edson, but this one has been moved off of the road. No lanes there are blocked. That's just your normal congestion that you're starting to see build along Blanding. But overall, I-95, I-10, both are looking pretty nice. Back to you. Thanks for that, Katie. Let's look at get some breaking news we're following right now at this hour. Two U.S. service members have been killed and two others have been wounded while fighting terrorists in Afghanistan. NATO says that the two came under fire during a mission to disrupt the Taliban's operation in the Kunduz district. Now, once again, this is breaking news we're following at this hour. Two U.S. service members have been killed while fighting in Afghanistan. We'll continue to follow this throughout the morning. Following breaking news, now closer to home, this is in southeast Georgia. The United States Coast Guard has rescued four people and a dog after a vessel exploded there. You see on your screen a picture of this happening very near the St. Simons Island Sound. It looks like a shrimp boat there, doesn't it? Only minor injuries are being reported in this one right now, but they are warning the Coast Guard, that is, boaters in that area, the St. Simon Sound area, to watch out for floating debris. Historic day for the First Coast. You've got President Obama going to be talking, as well as Donald Trump uh, campaigning out at the Equestrian Center, both making pit stops here in Jacksonville, campaigning for themselves with the various candidates. Shelby Danielson joining us now with what you need to know to see those candidates, or the candidate and the campaigner today. Shelby. 
Hey, Lewis. Good morning. Well, we are going to get to the details for Donald Trump's event in just a few uh, in just a little bit, but I'm going to start with President Obama visiting UNF, uh, speaking at the arena right behind me because I'm standing at the end of the line here. Hundreds of students we saw yesterday were lined up to get tickets, and now you can see this line is starting to get a little longer. We spoke to the people in front of the line. They have been here since one. Um, and I know some of these ladies actually just walked over here. They were sitting on the bench uh, to keep a little comfy for a while. And now I'm going to speak to some of these people. I see coffee. I see McDonald's breakfast. Are you a student, ma'am? No, no, not a student. Now, I heard that you, your child wouldn't come, but your niece came with you? That's my godchild. Nikki came. So tell me, okay, so you got the chair. You yeah. are expecting to wait a long time. What are you hoping to hear today? Well, I'm really just hoping to um, hear President uh, Obama talk about uh, the plan and what he sees as our future. I was at his inauguration, and so I definitely wanted to see him speak today as he kind of leaves office. Um, and that's really what I'm excited about. And I'm excited about hearing um, how we're going to get more people out to vote. You know, I, don't, I see that there's some low numbers in the polls. And so I, I really am excited about hearing how we're going to get more people out to vote. All right. Well, a good idea to bring a chair and start drinking that coffee. All right. We're going to just talk a little bit about uh, Donald Trump's event, and we're going to talk more about it coming up, too. Doors open at 9 a.m. at the Jacksonville Equestrian Center. There are no longer tickets available online, and he will begin speaking at noon. That's just off Normandy Boulevard, about 20 miles away from here. And we're going to have more details, of course, coming up. And on our website, you can find links to both of these events for more details. Live at UNF, Shelby Danielson, First Coast News. We know a lot of you will not be able to attend those rallies, so we'll air each one live on NBC 12 as they happen today. And you can watch regular programming over on ABC 25. And if you want to watch the rallies from your devices, we'll stream both of them on firstcoastnews.com. Oh, it was a big game. Stayed up late. Uh, 108 years, 162 games this year, a game seven, and then an extra inning on top of that. But this morning, the Chicago Cubs Finally, once again, world champions. Cubs fan and expert Lindsey Boach breaks down the historic win for us right now. Hey, Lindsey. Hey, good morning. You guys, it happened. This would have been a historic game either way. The Indians haven't won since 1948. The Cubs before this morning since 1908. But there it is, World Series champions at Wrigley Field. You can still see some folks who are out there celebrating. This is the moment that Cubs fans have been waiting for. This moment right here. Here. Heading into games five and six, it was 3 1 Indians, but no, the Cubs fired back, forcing a game seven. There is that final out. Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo. Wow. There were nine innings, then a rain delay, and then another inning, and the Cubs win it all eight to seven. Still celebrating this morning. Fans were peaceful, but they did climb on top of some television live trucks. Tens of thousands of Cubs fans poured into the streets to celebrate, and inside Progressive Field, in Cleveland, the Chicago fans celebrated there in those stands. You know, I can't tell you in words how awesome this is, but uh, this fan kind of sums it up for you. The happiest person alive! That's what happened! Let's go, Cubs! Let's go! Oh my goodness, here are some of the best reactions online. It's over, hashtag Bartman. Now get back to loving yourself and get some love from others. Hashtag Cubs, hashtag Cubs win, hashtag Chicago. Uh, another one says, my loyalties lie with my Detroit Tigers, but close behind are the Cubs. My dad, a lifelong Cubs fan, made me one too. So glad my old man got to see this happen. This is for you, dad. Uh, and then another one for you here. Uh, seems like the Cubs win has given the U.S. some reprieve before the election. So, of course, getting a little bit political with this as well. Ben Zobris, who drove in a run at the top of the 10th inning, is the Cubs' uh, most consistent player throughout the series. He was named World Series MVP following the Cubs' triumph. Lou? All right, Lindsay, thank you. Well, we've got a major warning for people who chug energy drinks every day. The disturbing way it took a toll on a man's health right here in Florida. Plus, an exciting piece of technology at Wolfson Children's Hospital. Up next, how the Buddy Bot is helping comfort kids during their stay. It's pretty cool. You want to see this. Your time, 6.09. Well, most all the World Series excitement, you had to see it maze on as well. In a surprise moment at that award show last night, pop superstar Beyonce helped celebrate the 50th anniversary with a performance of her song, 
Daddy Lessons and did it right there alongside the Dixie Chicks. Beyonce hit the stage unintroduced and the performance got a standing O. Mike? Good and a good morning to everybody. A warm start and get those shorts out for the kids. Temperatures already upper 60s to low 70s. Not far from our average highs in the mid to upper 70s. Not much fog like we've seen much of the week. So some good news going to work and school. But things will change. You'll need the umbrella by midday. Not an outdoor lunch type of day. Highest rain risk from noon to about 3, 4 o'clock. As we pinpoint it, well, let's start with that sunrise. It's going to be a beautiful one. Red sky delight 743 AM. Those cirrus clouds a sign of some change, but your cast shows mid 70s at the coast, low 80s inland. There's those drops of rain, so let's pinpoint it with your daily downpour. Looks like if you're at the beach to UNF, could see that downpour at 11 a.m. to San Marco, and downtown right around noon to the west side and Cecil in the Equestrian Center by 2, and then finally off toward Lake City by 4 o'clock before things calm down for your drive home. We'll have that weekend forecast, but first, Katie Jeffries, ViStar Credit Union Traffic Center. Thank you so much. The time is 613. All right, so let's talk about the rallies that are going on today. Donald Trump will be flying into Cecil Airport, and from there, he'll be making his way towards the Equestrian Center. The doors to his rally open at 9, though the rally doesn't start till noon, but expect Normandy to get pretty congested because it's really the only way into or out of the Equestrian Center. So if you're going to his rally, get there early. Now, President Obama will be coming into JIA and then making his way towards UNF. That rally starts around 1.30. Expect heavy traffic along 295 Beach as well as St. John's Bluff. Now, UNF is asking people going to the rally to please take Beach to Central Parkway and then park in Lot 18. But students at UNF today, please get there early to find parking. A lot of people headed towards your campus. Also, you could see some rolling roadblocks for the president, likely along 295 as he goes from the airport to UNF but that should only be uh, pretty brief as he passes on by. But of course, we'll keep you updated. Back to you. So if you're reaching for that energy drink to help you wake up, maybe you stayed up late to watch that World Series or the CMAs, maybe think again. Doctors in Gainesville treated a patient who developed liver failure for consuming too many of the popular beverages. Uh, he says he drank four or five energy drinks every day, every day now, for mm. three weeks. But three weeks isn't a lot of time, really. But a biopsy of his liver showed severe hepatitis from the excessive consumption, according to the doctors. His skin also turned yellow. Needless to say, giving up the drinks. I wonder which one specifically he was drinking. Oh, my so God. I had a Red Bull this morning. I'll yeah. be honest. So many people, you know, uh -oh. rely on those things. Okay. All right. The next time you're at Wolfson Children's Hospital, you may notice something a little different walking the halls. It has two legs, two arms, even two eyes. And it's keeping kids entertained through procedures. This is Buddy Bot. Look at him. The money to get him was given by an anonymous donor, and he's already making a big difference for some patients. Watch him help six year old Javen practice holding still for an MRI. Right there, you can see that. Woo! What do you think? Good. Was that good? Yeah. Who do you think won? You or Buddy Bot? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the bad movie, so he was moving. <laughs> he can do a variety of things from dancing to even playing rock, paper, scissors. Wow. Katie Jeffries will have more on how Buddy Bot is changing the hospital's experience for kids tomorrow on Good Morning Jacksonville. Very cool. Looking forward to that. Well, Allegiant Airlines just can't seem to catch a break. Find out what a new investigation discovered this time that may have you thinking twice before you book. Plus a close encounter at the beach. Look at that. You're seeing it happen. Jeez. They got very close, those surfers and the sharks. Tell you what happened. Thanksgiving just a few weeks away, and there's more bad news for Allegiant Airlines. If you plan on using that carrier for your Thanksgiving travel, the newspaper investigation has found that Allegiant Air's planes are four times as likely to break down mid-flight. Jeez. That's compared to those operated by other major U.S. airlines uh, carriers. Here's why. According to the Tampa Bay Times, Allegiant jets were forced to make unexpected landings at least 77 times in 2015 for serious mechanical failures. We've reported about this happening at JIA before. All right. Well, we've seen pictures and videos of sharks before, but this mm. next video is pretty frightening. I would say check it out for yourself. Oh my God. I'm a this is video I'm coming to us from Australia. That is a shark right there. You see hovering in the water very close to several surfers, a little too close. Now in this video, you can hear the people discussing whether to alert the men in the water. 
<laughs> Ignorance I think is bliss. So. Now, yeah. suddenly one surfer catches a wave and goes right over that shark. Let's see if you'll see that uh, coming up. Oh, there we go. Right there. Uh, you can see him. The oh, shark is right under underneath it. him and he goes right oh, oh my God. over it. Dude, how are you missing that? Maybe, I mean, surfing his way out of there is probably the best way to go. <laughs> now, some of those folks attempt to warn the surfers. The shark is seen swimming away moments later. That is frightening. But like you said, ignorance is bliss. It Maybe is. don't don't tell me about I don't that. Even know. Flip out, out real water. quick. All right, let's check in with Mike Franklin now for you. What the hey, yeah. Mike. Hey, great to be with you. Happy Thursday and yeah, transition day. A high of 80, 75 at the beach. Some pop-up showers mainly through the heart of the day, right around midday to about four o'clock. No rain if you're in Georgia. That includes areas of St. Mary's up into Brunswick and St. Simons Island. And then on Friday. Look at this real November weather ushered in by the strong front. We could pop a thunderstorm by mid to late afternoon tomorrow and then see all this clear air. This is coming our way with high pressure as we head into the weekend. Our game of the week is out at Glen Academy and look at those temperatures. Will they fall? So today, tomorrow, a couple more days, low 80s for most of us. And then look at this. We start to plummet falling like a rock for the football games tomorrow. 62 degrees. Here's the difference. Polar jet stream takes a dip along the east coast, but notice it still stays north of us. So your coldest weather is going to be in the northeast for us cooler right about where we should be for this time of year. So for Saturday, a start at 51, a high of 73. The only change of the weekend forecast Maybe a little warmer, but these temperatures are going to be just so sweet in that sunshine. 48 to start Sunday, a high of 75. So for the Blue Angels, take your sweatshirts. It's going to be a bit brisk at the beach, a little breezy at times. Low 70s both Saturday and Sunday. Well, this is the time of year where we call it November nice. On average, our driest month of the year. So let's go out 10 days. Once we get through those few scattered showers the next couple of days, we do dry out Saturday, Sunday, and through the next 10 days. Look at those temperatures. Pleasant mid 70s to near 80 degrees. So happy Thursday. Make sure you download that First Coast News app. We'll have this 10 day forecast in detail. But first, let's get to Katie Jeffries now in the Vice Star Credit Union Traffic Center. Thank you, Mike. Your time is 621. Good morning. Well, we do have some good news. It looks like that crash that was on 295 southbound just before New Kings Road that was in the shoulder there has since been moved. So you shouldn't have any issues going through there now. Want to let you know about a project that's going to start on Monday. It's on the Hart Bridge, that eastbound off ramp towards Atlantic, so that ramp is going to close. So I know that's going to impact quite a few of you. It's going to be closed for several months while they do some work there. You'll be routed towards University and then back towards Atlantic. That's the detour route. So give yourself an extra five to ten minutes in the morning to navigate that. I 10 right now looks great from Baldwin all the way towards downtown is only about 14 minutes, but I 10 inside the 295 loop. This drive time builds quickly and it usually starts picking up around 645. Hi, I'm John Wade, head golf professional at Sea Island Golf Club, host of the PGA Tours RSM Classic. Today, I'm going to give you the options you have if you hit your ball into a lateral water hazard. We've got a couple of options. Uh, one is that we could play the ball from inside the hazard. Just remember not to ground your club and not to move loose impediments. If you deem the ball to not be playable from outside the hazard, say it went in the water, we got a couple options. One, you can always go back to where you last played, in this case, the tee, and re-tee. Option two is you can take the point where the ball last crossed the hazard, which I've represented by this tee here, and go back as far as you want between you and the flag. Option three is you can take two club links from that point of where it last crossed, drop, Keep in mind, all three of these options incur a one-shot penalty. Uh, I would consult the USGA rules book, rule 26-1, for further details. If you'd like to see this tip again, go to firstcoastnews.com or rsmclassic.com. A Gator is going to help you really choose the 26-1. Still ahead this morning, if you're tired of losing your phone charger, Apple may soon have an answer for you. A phone that doesn't need one. Say what? Plus, it's going to be an action-packed weekend here on the front. There's Patty Jack. She's going to tell us everything because Mike Cranley yesterday alluded to a bazillion things going on. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that in a moment. Stay right there. All right, so we've got a big weekend. And without further ado, yes. Patty Jack's going to tell us. It's so up. much to do. Usually I give you like the top five. You do. But this time we have so many big tickets. Let's just get started. Okay. The first one is a huge one, big win for the city. Jacksonville is hosting the Navy versus Notre Dame game this Saturday. Kickoff is at 11.30. This puts the national spotlight in Jacksonville. Such a big win for us. 
tickets are still on sale. And you know, kickoff is at 11.30, so that still gives you plenty of time to see so many other things across town. So here's another big yes. event, another show, Military Pride in our community. It is the Jacksonville Sea and Sky Air Show, both Saturday and Sunday. You know, Jacksonville is the birthplace, mm -hmm. the Blue Angels, so to have them flying over Jacksonville Beach this weekend, really phenomenal homecoming. The event is free, it is open to everyone, and you know, be sure to give yourself plenty of time to find a parking spot, because it gets pretty packed. Sure. Another big event, you know, the Jacksonville Greater Agricultural Fail Fair is here, it's open, it is downtown every day until November 13th. You know, enjoy the rides, the fair, the food, the animals, live concerts every night. Tickets are $10 for adults, $5 for children and seniors. And remember, some rides are extra, sure. but totally worth it. Yeah. All right, there is also a new event. It's called the Go Local Market. Okay. It's happening Saturday. Local vendors, a great place to kick off your holiday season, but you know, shopping. It is at Engine 15 downtown, noon to five on Saturday. And then the last one is one of my favorite ones. It's Please. the third year. It is Porch Fest in Springfield. It is phenomenal community event Saturday from noon until nine. There will be live music and all the porch and all these historic and beautiful homes. Beautiful festival, it is free, noon to nine. Go check it out. And for these events and everything